Now, in this chapter now, we're talking about stocks, and there are two kinds of stocks that we're going to talk about here. One's preferred stock, and the other's common stock. Now, in this problem now, we're going to, we're going to demonstrate how to value preferred stock. Now, what you're going to see is that we're going to take the, din, the dividend on the preferred and divide it by our required return. And that's known as the process of capitalization, or capitalizing the cash flow. Now that's what you do when the cash flow's growth rate is zero. And with a preferred stock, whatever the dividend is today, that'll be the dividend every year forever. So it's got a growth rate of zero. So if it's $8 a year now, it'll be $8 a year 12 years from now or 20 years from now. So the growth rate in the dividend is zero. And again, the process we go through is called capitalization. Now this problem reads like this. It says the Zell Corporation issued per perpetual preferred stock with a 10% annual dividend. The stock currently yields 8% and its par value is $100. A part says, what is the stock's value? The B part reads, suppose interest rates rise and pull the preferred stock's yield up to 12%, what is the new market value? Now, in this particular problem now, they tell us that the stock, the preferred stock, has a dividend rate of 10%. And when you're given the dividend in the form of a percentage, in order to get the dollar dividend, you take the par value of the preferred and you multiply it by the dividend percentage. So they tell us in the problem that the par value of the preferred is $100 and the dividend rate is 10%. So $100 times 10% gets us an annual dividend of $10. They then want us to value the stock. Well, we're going to take the annual dividend, $10, and divide it by our required return. And in the problem now, they tell us that investors require a return on this stock of 8%. That means $10 divided by 0.08, the decimal form of 8%, that gives us a price on the preferred stock of $125. This is the intrinsic value of the preferred stock. So if you required a return of 8%, you wouldn't pay more than $125 a share. If you could buy the stock for less than $125 a share, you'd do that because then you get a return greater than 8%.